Good evening and welcome to our closing two weeks of The Heroes of Faith that has been our summer series theme for this year. And I have enjoyed so much the very talented men that we have that have given the lessons and I have enjoyed and learned from every one of them. And so for the next two weeks, we're going to close up from the passage as we look at Hebrews chapter 12, beginning of 1 through 3, and then go back and look at some of the words of encouragement um, that those in the stadium would give. As I think about this marathon, and that's what it is, it, it's not a short distance. It's a long marathon. Several weeks ago, I wore a Triton boat shirt. Red, bright red, white, had Triton to cross it. Um, and little Brooks Bailey thought it was a biking shirt. Well, I don't own a bike, per se. I own a bike with a motor on it, but not a pedal bike. And so I thought, here's what I will do. I'll go to the closet and I will get my marathon shirt with all the sponsors and the numbers on it. And I've hunted and I hunted and I hunted and I just could not find a marathon running shirt, Brooks. And then I remembered, I've never run in a marathon. And so tonight, we're going to be simply looking at running a marathon. When I think about the marathon of life, I have run that marathon, even though I have not run a physical marathon race. I have run the marathon race of life for 65 years. I have run the marathon life of marriage for 44 years. I have run the marathon race so far of parenting three precious children for 40 years. I have run the Christian life for a little over 51 years. I realize that I am closer to the end than I am to the start or to the middle of that race. And many of those who have started the race with me have already finished. They have won their crown. They are in the presence of the Lord and they are sitting up in the seats of the Colossade. They're there cheering me on. And, and I think of some of my great mentors that have died even within the last two years. And my brother, uh, dying of brain cancer, has finished his race. God has given him the crown. And the majority of the time when we find the word crown, if you look at the contents, it's not the golden crown of sovereignty or royalty that we would think about. It is the crown of a runner, an Olympiad, who has run the race and they have given him the wreath. We're told to run the race as if we are the only ones that will receive that crown that wreath, that victory. And that has to do with the idea, if not that we're the only ones in the race, it has to do with the idea that we get distracted far too often with the things around us and we don't finish. And so, thinking about that, as you go into the Colosseum, Sitting up in those stairs, up in those seats, we find those that have gone before us. And they're cheering us on. And there's times, there's times in this race that we slow down. That's understandable. There are times in this race 
that we may stop. The saddest thing is that in this marathon, there are far too many who quit the race. They just quit. They get out of it. And if we weren't a people, and if God didn't understand that there are times that we just get weary, then this story would not be here. And so God understands. And I think this is the reason that God has given this story for us to be encouraged in this marathon. I desperately need it. And when I think of those that are in the stands, I think maybe of those that would come down and what they would say to me would be so encouraging. Number one, it would be encouraging and it would be empowering. The second thing that I think about is those witnesses of the year. I would think that what they say to me would be the very essence of their life. It's not like an unmarried person without children trying to tell you how to parent children and have a good marriage. These people that would come out of the stand would be those, those that would give you the very essence of their life. And number three, I think what they would give us would be applicable to our lives. Number four, it would elicit a yes, I need that in our lives. And so here's what we find. We find that in a marathon, usually in the slide that's before you, you'll notice that a marathon is usually run out on the roads, out in the country, not going round and around in a stadium. And so in the marathon, here's what happens. You leave the Colosseum, you leave the beginning place, and you all jihaw, you all fight for a position. And that position constantly changes. And you get out on the road. In the average marathon, <clears throat> usually is 26 miles, 385 yards. Think about it, 26 miles. It takes the average good runner just a little over two hours. And so they leave the stadium. In front of you, you see the old coliseums where they would start the race and they would go out and they would run the race. And then they would return. They would come back and they would finish the race at the Colosseum. And to that, you'd have the cheering. You'd have people standing and encouraging. And you and I have watched the Olympics. Some of those runners, it, it, it's like they never get tired. And other times, they, something happens, they get a muscle lock and they have to stop the race. And then there's some who get so close and then just fall. And so the Colosseum was the starting and the ending of the race. You will also notice that in this picture you have the Colosseum and the seating. There would be royalty there. There would be those that were close. And then there was everyone else. And they would cheer you on. You knew when you started that you had approximately 26 miles, 385 yards. A good runner, 30 minutes, one hour, an hour and a half, two hours. And he'd come back into that Coliseum Finish the race to the cheers of those that were in the stands. The difference is we are not in a physical marathon. We're in a spiritual race. 
And we don't know exactly where the end is. But then I believe that if I was in prison and I had like five years, every day I could mark off a day, mark off another day, and I could slowly see the end. But in the marathon of life that we as children of God are running, Number one, we don't know what is on the side. We do not know exactly when the race will end. And so after you have the encouraging words of chapter 9 of the book of Hebrews, you come to chapter 10, and we're told, and the writer of the book of Hebrews was writing primarily to Jews, Jewish audience that had become Christians and now under persecution, they were fleeing and going back to Judaism, to which we find the words, do not forsake the assembling of yourself. Prior to that in 24, 10, um, chapter 10 and verse 24, encourage each other while it's today do not forsake the assembly as the manner of some. And so some had got out of the race. But exhort one another. And the more so as you see the day approaching. Exhortation. The cheering of the crowd. And brethren, I am so blessed here. In this congregation, Robert and I have elders that cheer us on. Our shepherds, cheer us on. Our members, cheer us on. And when you come to the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, you find this statement. I love these illustrations <clears throat> and the characters that I'm going to be talking about are found in a book written by John C. Maxwell, an excellent writer. And the book is entitled Running with the Giants. That is our great mentors, those that have been mentioned in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And so here's what we find. He says in chapter 12 and in verse 1, <clears throat> as it's talking about running this race, we're told to run with patience the race that sit before us. We need to lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily besets us or turns us to the side, looking, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is our leader. He has run the race. He has finished the race. And he is a part of the audience that is in the stadium. That cheering us on, saying, you can do it. Who for the joy that was set before him suffered the cross despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And so because it is so easily for us to be distracted, it is so easy for us to be bogged down in sin. James says in the book of James chapter 1, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Lust, when it is conceived, bringeth forth sin. Sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Do not get turned to the side. As a parent, <clears throat> when we lived in Tiptonville, Tennessee, I was a short distance. I was the hundred yard uh, and I was good in the South Island of New Zealand at Papanui High School. I never did do the long runs. I wasn't disciplined enough. <clears throat> but our daughter stood
started off with like the 500 meters and then she went into um, cross country. But when she was very young, we were at Tiptonville, Tennessee, and we went to watch the race, one of the races, the short races. And Rachel, just tall, slender, just a natural athlete. And as she was running, we're kind of thinking, I hope everyone knows that that's our daughter. And she's running and, she, and she's way out front and she turns around and one of her friends had fallen down. And Rachel stopped and turned around and went back. And I'm thinking, Rachel, that's not how you win races. And she went back and she picked up a friend and hand in hand they finished the race. And I thought to myself, as a proud parent, that's the way that the race of life should be run. I believe that you and I are victorious. We follow our Lord in this race as the Israelites followed Moses through the wilderness. How Israel followed the leader, Joshua, into the promised land. I think many times what happens is that in the race we get tired. There's just so much around us that discourages us. And sometimes we fall. And either one of our great brethren or it may be a time of reflection where we are thinking about the great heroes of faith that have been discussed by some of the men in this series. We pick ourselves back up. It may be that a good brethren who is ahead, and I believe that the reason that we win victories is so that we can turn around. We may be ahead of other people. But God allows us to win victories so that we can turn around and look back and help our brethren that have fallen. I'm not interested in standing on the first place steps. I just want to finish the, faith, the race. Like Paul said, I want to keep the faith. And I want to help other people receive that crown of glory. And this is what the writer of Hebrews is talking about. You're going through a lot. Stop. Help someone. And when you fall, look to those heroes in the stadium. Next week, we're going to talk about some of those heroes. We're going to look at them and see if they would come out of the stadium. They would give us, as we have talked about, they would give us words of courage. They would empower us to run the race, to keep going, because here's what's happening. We run the race for a while, and God lets us come back in a lap through the Colosseum. He lets us run in there and those that have gone before us in the faith are standing and they're applauding us and they encourage us and they empower us to keep running. Again, they also would tell us, here is what's important to me. This is why I did what I did that got me written in that book. And then you and I, as we start the race again, as we continue the laps, we'd say that, that's applicable to me. That really helps me run the race. Next week, as we come back through the stadium, we're going to talk about a man by the name of Noah. 
Noah was one person that made a difference. And I hope that you'll join us. Read the book of Hebrews, especially um, 9 through 12. They are great words of exhortation. They are words that lift us up and help us to run the race that's set before us. We will finish the race. We will receive a crown of glory. And we also will be in the stadium. And I pray that as you and I are running the race, like I said, I have been running this race for 65 years. I've been running the race of marriage for 44 years. I've been running the race of parenting for 40 years. I've been running the race of Christianity for 51. I pray. I pray that as I sit in the stadium one day, that people can look and say, I remember, Mike, and here's what I remember. And they are words of encouragement. And I pray that we look at our lives. Christ living in us can give others the strength to finish the race. Parents, your children are looking at you. Are we helping them? New Christians are looking at us. Are we helping them? Next week, we will look at some of the great heroes of faith. And if you're a faithful child of God, you also will be sitting in that stadium. Thank you for joining us. And we pray that you have being drawn a little bit closer, you've been encouraged by the lesson before you.